Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this uh, Sunday, right? Is it Sunday? End of the weekend, May 14th, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all out there who are mothers. And uh, what time is it? It is about 11.44 a.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California where we still have some earthquake activity ramping up into the Lake Almanor area here over the last hour, more specifically, 2.7 and a 2.8 continuing uh, to add to the number of earthquakes here in Northern California following the 5.5 event. So far, we're up to 70 earthquakes. Uh, nothing major overnight and within the last 24 hours, it looks like this 2.8 that's just, just struck a short time ago is the largest in that uh, last 24 hour period. Now there's a, a couple articles being put out here. This is from the uh, local news site here where I live just outside of Chico, actionnewsnow.com. Um, newly discovered Lake Almanor fault lines peak geologist interest, no volcanic activity reported. Now looking at the USGS map here, it looks as though it's in between a couple different fault zones. So. They're uh, claiming that there's a newly discovered fault here underneath the lake that uh, needs to be studied more. Uh, here, Chico, California, Chico State Geology Professor and Chair Member of the Environmental Science Department, uh, Todd Green, says that the fault lines active in Thursday's earthquakes are too far away from Mount Lassen to cause concern for volcanic activity. Uh, he mentions that's very common for active volcano centers to have earthquakes occur. That is well-known fact, but this is pretty far from the volcano itself. Uh, he claims these recent earthquakes have shown there's a newly discovered fault line underneath Lake Almanor, where the earthquakes originated from. Uh, Green believes the fault lines need to be studied more so people can plan ahead for any damages it could cause to infrastructure in the future with special consideration to the canyon dam uh, and that uh, that would send a lot of water downstream I don't think we want that right uh, the main concern is the dam and if there's a large earthquake that water goes directly into the north fork of the Feather River and that Feather River of course goes right into Oroville uh, you really don't want that type of water of Lake Almanor going down that fast that would be catastrophic Green said so yeah earthquake activity up around uh, the dam Continuing to watch it, seeing how it's playing out. Either way, still quite a bit of earthquake activity up there. Uh, we'll watch that and keep that in mind. Also, uh, what do we got here? 2.9 on the San Andreas Fault here, just off the beer. It looks like the creeping segment here of the fault near Pinnacles coming in within the last hour. Uh, looks like about 5.5 kilometers deep. Make sure everything's good. All right, uh, Southern California. Not a whole lot popping off here now. We do have one earthquake off the coast of Baja, 4.5 early this morning as well. Um, looks like about 10 kilometers deep here. All right, Pacific Northwest, rest of the country. All looks fairly quiet. Um, one earthquake out in the Ducktown, Tennessee area. About one o'clock in the morning at 1.9 up against the Appalachian Mountains there. See what else we got. Uh, looking at the big picture, I think right now uh, we're looking at a uh, well, quite a bit of swarming over here around the Japan area just south of Tokyo now this earthquake activity is relatively shallow uh, but we're seeing a pretty good swarm uh, not into the Izu Trench Izu Trench starts over here and subducts this is at the surface levels and so far we've seen uh, looks like a 5.8 just after midnight um, and a couple other fives and fours in there as well. And I'm sure many other smaller earthquakes uh, just south of Tokyo, Japan. Looks like there is a, a couple different uh, seamounts out here in Volcano Islands. Uh, not 100% certain if this is volcanic activity or not, but we'll continue to watch that as uh, this is actually a pretty good, decent swarm out here uh, that could indicate a number of things uh, maybe volcanic activity below or potentially getting ready to produce a larger damaging earthquake upstream here uh, along the uh, subduction zones here of the japan trench and the izu trench area uh, so we'll continue to watch that 
Uh, also a fairly deep earthquake here, and that may be a sign of the uh, ladder there that I just mentioned about the uh, stressful area up here and producing a larger earthquake. This deeper movement way down there, 400 kilometers deep into the Izu Trench for that 4.2 occurring, uh, roughly within the mix of all this earthquake activity. So watch this region right here. Uh, safe, it's say, safe to say probably the Japan area, uh, Japan Trench south into the Izu Trench here for some potential larger scale movement, uh, much larger than what we're seeing uh, with that type of setup. Uh, further down south into the Philippines, it looks like, um, oh, we got a 5.1 in the Maluka Sea. That one coming in a couple hours ago, 123 kilometers deep. Uh, a glance here at the earthquake 3D model uh, shows and verifies roughly about what the USGS is stating there on their map as well, although a couple smaller quakes listed in that area. But man, look at that. Look at that movement here into the uh, Izu Trench south of Tokyo area. Pretty uh, fairly nice earthquake swarm ongoing there. New Zealand looks like a couple threes popping off here. Uh, one deeper movement quake into the southern end of the Kermadec Trench and a 3.0 down around the South Island area. Further to the west, uh, looks like we do have some activity coming into the Turkey area with the most recent, it looks like a 2.0 uh, continuing with that aftershock activity around the Turkey region. The Atlantic Ocean has woken up a little bit. Look at this, getting uh, some fours up here, well north of Iceland. Just uh, I'm not even for certain which fault this is up here. Let me see what we got. Well, we got one coming in here. It just says Greenland. Uh, but well east of the Greenland area, outside the Greenland Sea, a 4.6, 10 kilometers deep on the plate boundary. Uh, that's going to be, well, it looks like definitely the divergent boundaries up here. Uh, notice the separation here of the plates from the Eurasia and the North American plate. It's been awfully quiet in this area, but it looks like things are starting to wake up here a little bit across the Atlantic. Uh, we did have a 4.9 south of Iceland as well. Uh, near the Wreck Jane's Ridge. This is a divergent boundary. Again, separation of the seafloor. Uh, that was coming in, looks like about four o'clock this morning. Also some activity, uh, let's see, I know I've seen another one out here. There's a smaller 2.5. Uh, and also some activity south here into the Southern Atlantic Ocean with a 4.8. USGS not reporting that earthquake though. Uh, around the Chile area in South America, quite a few twos. Getting a cluster of earthquakes up here around the um, Columbia area. I was kind of watching this last night coming in. Seeing a couple fours across this area. Some of it deep, some shallow. Uh, definitely a noticeable uptick in earthquake activity here across the northern end of the South American plate. Uh, down around the Puerto Rico, or up around the Puerto Rico area. Most of this movement here from yesterday, but we're still kind of watching this area up here around the Mona Seamount with a pretty good swarm of activity into that region uh the big island of hawaii looks like things are a little bit calmer today nothing within the last hour looks like the last earthquake of 1.7 the pahala area of the big island up north into alaska of course we had this five pointer yesterday coming in since then not a whole lot along the aleutian trench uh, around the kuro kamachaka trench had that activity yesterday nothing going on this morning or this afternoon so far. Things very minimal currently across the Alaska area. Uh, let's see what else is there that we're missing. There's that movement there off the coast of Baja. Let me check out Yellowstone and see what's going on. Most of our activity though, folks, is really centered over here. The Western Pacific uh, area, Western Pacific plate boundary. And adjacent plates so definitely watch that area around japan that's um that's a good swarm of activity there and it's relatively shallow let me see what we got here for uh this i know we got a lot of earthquake activity uh but i was looking at the depth of these earthquakes it looks like we do get quite a bit of shallow or earthquake activity as well here at the uh, uh surface level look at this cluster here man that's a that's a lot of large movement uh, again, that's a little bit further north than the epicenter activity we're seeing today. All right, uh, Yellowstone National Park here across the uh, 
beautiful Wyoming area. Not a whole lot. Uh, looks like maybe one earthquake here overnight. Aside from that, uh, very minimal activity there at Yellowstone National Park. Checking out the space weather event today. It looks like, um, let's see, do we have the latest uh, activity? This is put out. Yes, we do. It looks like they've uh, fixed their issue. That's going to be the SDO 514-1847, and it is right now 1854. UTC time so good we got looks like we got everything back up and running here from the SDO this is a UV filter rays be able to see uh, any flares that are popping off it doesn't look like it's all that active currently um, let's see check out the most magnetic structure here this was put out very recently as well luckily and um, well our active regions are no longer visible or barely visible here on the western limb of the sun and we're left with uh, just about one sunspot region here uh, that may pose a threat for some C flare maybe some M flare activity and aside from that uh, so that's gonna be 3305 here the main uh, core within the sunspot region that harbors potential for some flaring uh, aside from that eastern limb of the sun looks awfully quiet not a whole lot of potential. The 99% uh, chance for a C flare stands. M flare lowered to 15% chance. X flare around 1%. Don't think we're going to see any X flare probability. Um, looking at the Aurora forecast, not a whole lot happening here, folks. Very minimal activity. No major CMEs have been produced. If they have, uh, they've been uh, directed away from Earth. Only 20% chance of auroras at higher latitudes very minimal activity and no coronal holes facing us so we're entering into a very quiet spell uh, currently on the sun all right folks um have a good day um supposed to be about 97 degrees today again here it's 90 right now and uh it's just barely noon <laughs> So it's going to be a hot day here in Northern California, uh, where I live again outside of Chico. So, yeah, look at that. I was just looking at the dam here. Uh, that's a lot of water up there at Lake Almanor. Here's the North Fork Feather River, and that does run along with another stream, it looks like, down. Uh, let's see here. Eventually, this all goes into the. Uh, Lake Oroville area. Yeah, that would not be uh, that would not be a good scenario uh, with that earthquake activity. I'm sure they're looking at this very closely. I'm tempted to maybe even go up there and look at that myself. Um, I've been up there numerous times, but never thought to look at the um, the uh, the dam area. Let me see here. Go back to satellite imagery. This one doesn't go in all that far. But uh, yeah, I may check it out uh, here. See what's going on. It's kind of an interesting uh, scenario. And still, a lot of these earthquakes are relatively shallow, uh, indicating, if not, you know, right at the surface levels, because uh, this elevation up here is around five to six thousand feet and with this type of uh, negative depth negative 1.3 kilometers that would put it right at the surface levels uh, let's see here Prattville I want to see if these have been reviewed automatic status so a lot of these earthquakes have not been reviewed at all I'm not for sure maybe the USGS doesn't seem too concerned about it but uh, all these quakes that popped up are uh, still automatic status so these could get adjusted with the uh, uh, with not only the magnitude and location and depth. Uh, so we'll check this out a little bit later, see if they get to it. Most likely it'll be on Monday um, once they get things going. All right, uh, let's see. I think that's about it, folks, for earthquake activity. We're really not looking at any major severe weather threat, although it looks like they added a little slight risk uh, for areas around uh, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri region. Well, no, that's the 2% here. Uh, looks like they just added this area. 
Looks like a tornado potential there. Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. Springfield, Illinois. Evansville, Indiana. Slight risk of tornado activity, although it looks very minimal. Uh, but that wasn't there yesterday, so it must mean uh, the ingredients are kind of coming together there for some potential thunderstorm activity in the severe range. Uh, Northern California, what do we got going on here? Looks like my neck of the woods. A little bit of thunderstorm activity forecasted here, it looks like. Uh, probably mostly in the mountain range here, although it looks like it may be stretching into the northern Sacramento Valley. All right, folks, hope everyone has a good day. Stay cool. Uh, I'm going to probably spend most of my day out in the pool uh, just to uh, cool off a little bit. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight with the update video. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.